Hey there YouTube, Tim here with The Way of the Rope. And in today's video, I'm going to give you five tips to help you instantly feel better at rope flow. Now, not only that, they'll also make you look better too. But when you think about it, how we look is often a reflection of how we feel. So if you focus on that, the look will come naturally. But with nearly all the tips I'm gonna give you today, you could apply them across the board to any movement or physical practice that you're into. Whether that's sports, dance, parkour, calisthenics, animal flow, martial arts, whatever it is across the board, you can apply them as well. First tip I'd like you to think about is filling your body. If you picture a child playing or dancing or singing, every fiber of their being is filling their body in the action of what they're trying to do. Now, one way to fill the body is to think about lengthening the body. If you think about a nice ballet pose or Tai Chi, they're lengthening around. You can kind of imagine you're holding a big Swiss ball here and it lengthens the spine, lengthens the neck, tucks the pelvis under and lengthens the arms. When it comes to rope flow, we can think about these same principles as well. So we're not just timid and shy in our body, we're starting to fill the edges of our body as we go. Now I'm not asking you to overdo it or fake it. Just imagine if you were five or 10% more confident, how would you move? Number two, weight shift. Now if you picture a human footprint in the mud, what does the footprint tell us? It tells us where the body has a connection with the ground. Now what shape is a human footprint? Kind of like that, like a semicircle, maybe a little bit lengthened out. Now if you imagine footprints of someone taking two steps, right, you've got a step here, the weight rolls around the edge on the outside edge, curves in, center of mass of the body comes across and then we roll again. So as we walk, there's this natural roll and a curve of the foot sends us back and the weight comes back through the middle. So as we rope flow, we can just think about that natural weight shifting from foot to foot. Especially with a pattern like the dragon roll, it really encourages us to shift our weight and our ribs from foot to foot. Now, one way to help this is if you close your eyes and practice rope flow and just feel your weight and what leg it wants to go on and just allow your body to go with that. Now, when we're weight shifting from foot to foot, we're playing with our center of mass on a horizontal plane. Now, point number three is once again about playing with our center of mass, but this time vertically. I'd like you to think about lowering your center of mass. Imagine like a Tai Chi or a karate master, when they're stood there, they kind of just have this slight lower, not fully into horse stance, but they're just thinking about lowering. This helps us to ground with the earth, center our balance a little bit better. Once again, if you close your eyes in the practice and just lower, it might help you to feel where your center of mass is and ground down and find the balance a little bit better. And finally, as the point was about playing with center of mass, it's good to think about going higher as well. And this dance between lowering and hiring a center of mass. Oftentimes we get so stuck on one height and one plane when we're walking, we always remain at that height, that we don't vary the levels up. And this is what's gonna keep us moving and keep us young, to be able to vertically shift our center of mass with grace and fluidity. Number four, and the opposite of closing our eyes, is to have a focused gaze. Now in yoga, they call this a drishti. Now my take on this is that in order for the body to remain balanced and coordinated, it likes to organize around a level and horizontal eye line. And not only that, choosing a precise point in your eye line to focus on is like giving us a non-physical anchor to the world around us. Now, if you picture an animal hunting or in any sport where there's a ball or a person or a goal to focus on, or imagine if you will, a ballet dancer, how their head looks when they spin. They have a focus point, they turn, find the point again to remain balanced. A simple way to implement this is just to choose a tree or a fence post or a flower to focus on while you practice. Now, when you change from underhand to overhand or side to side, it's okay to change the focus point. But just like we have intention with the body, we want intention with the eyes. This is actually probably the number one tip on my list, not only for how rope flow is gonna feel if you have this focus point, but actually when I watch someone doing rope flow, it makes such a difference to how they look when they have a focus point and when they don't. As well as that, if you've got dyspraxia or hypermobility, or you coach someone with one of those, this has been the make or break cue that's actually helped them unlock the dragon roll. Without it, someone's head's rocking all over. They don't know where they are in the body. You give them that cue and suddenly the body learns to organize around it. Fifth and final tip, relaxed but involved wrists. To grip a rope and rope flow, you want this sort of okay grip where the handle can kind of almost freely roll in here and we're not overly tight with the hands. Now what I see with most people that first learn rope flow, and I did it myself, very tight grip on the handles, very focused on what's happening in the arms and the torso, but not much thinking about what's happening in the hands. Now the beauty of rope flow 
is it connects the very tips of our fingers to our feet. And so often when it comes to moving our hands, we're very good at pronating. A lot of activities we do, throwing, swimming, there's a lot of pronation. When we allow the figure of eight to ripple out from our spine to our extremities, there's this really nice, gentle supination that we can allow through the wrists. So along with this okay grip, we want to allow the wrist to work. One way to feel or think about this is in the overhand figure of eight, if we allow the hands to trace the figure of eight that the rope's leading us to, there is this real nice natural supination that happens with the thumbs. And in the underhand eight, the pinky finger starts to lead and we get this nice supination as we cut up through the middle. And my favorite pattern to play with wrist control is actually the paradiddle. Now we don't want them to be completely loose and slack. We're not just swinging them around. We're trying to surf the narrow thread between too relaxed and too tight. Now this is something you will naturally get better at as you practice more, but it's never too early to start thinking about. In summary then, you wanna think about filling more of your body as you flow, allowing the weight to shift side to side as we lower our center of gravity slightly so we feel more grounded and balanced. A fixed focus point for the eyes, for the body to organize around. And finally, allowing the wrists to play too. And as you implement these, you should feel more of the whole body as a system come online. Basically, it should feel more fun. Hopefully that's given you some ideas to think about the next time you go and swing an old piece of rope. If you're new to rope flow and you wanna learn more, I've got an eight weeks to fluidity course. I really think it's one of the best places you could start. Or if you wanna get a rope, both of them are at waytherope.com. If you wanna learn more from me about biomechanics, well, I've got the School of Biomechanics, you can check that link below as well. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Ooh, what a beautiful tree. Sorry you fell, dude.